The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. I know this is a little strange to do a public information session and hearing on the internet, but we're going to do this. We've got our air quality staff listening from all over the state and participating, so hopefully this will work. My name is Jennifer Dixon, and I work in our environmental support division, and I'm going to be facilitating the webinar um, slash informational sessions slash hearing today. So hopefully you're on to join us for this, these two proposed projects, one for Eagle Mine and one for Humboldt Mill. Um, we're gonna be doing it a little bit differently today. And the first thing that we're gonna do once we get past sort of this housekeeping part is we're going to be introdu introducing the Air Quality Division staff that are going to be participating in the panel discussion. So I'll let you know who those people are and what their roles are in the division. We're gonna talk a little bit about how this meeting is going to work. It's gonna be a little bit different than what we normally do. So if you've been to some of our other Eagle meetings or hearings, it's gonna be a little bit different, obviously not just because we're on the internet. The first part of the evening tonight is going to be an informational session. So I'm going to have a staff person provide you with some information about the air quality division in general, if you haven't been to one of our meetings before. And then the second part of that is going to be information about the two proposed projects specifically. Once we get through that portion, we're going to be opening it up to question and answer. And that's going to be a little bit different because what we're going to ask you guys to do is if you have a question, you're going to type the question into the question bar. And then I will read the question and we'll have staff answer that question verbally. So it's going to be a little bit challenging to kind of do that, I think, but we're going to definitely make it happen. So a few things um, house, housekeeping wise are that you will all be muted during the webinar. So your questions are going to go in the question or chat box and we are recording this webinar. So if for some reason you wanted it later, you could get that through um, FOIA. So I know that we're, we hopefully everyone can hear us, can hear me, I'm not getting any other uh, notes through the question box, but we did get one. So I think we're going to try to help you out there um, if you're having issues and you can't hear. So you're going to definitely want to look at your audio tab and make sure that you have the right things um, clicked on so that you can hear everything. All right. So I think I skipped one. All right. So I want to introduce the staff today. Again, I said my name is Jennifer Dixon and our primary presenter that we have today is Andy Drury and he is in our air quality permit section. And he's the one that's going to give you a background of what air quality is and what our role is in EGLE and then talk to you about the proposed projects that we're talking about this evening. Joe Scanlon is our district office inspector, so he'll be able to answer some questions during the question and answer portion about how inspections are done at these kinds of facilities, if you have those kinds of questions. Tom Julian is in our modeling unit, and our modeling unit is the unit that does air modeling. So they use a computer program to look at where um, different emissions from these proposed projects may go and determine whether or not they're going to be okay and meet air quality rules and regulations. We also have Mike Deppa on the line. He's from our toxics unit and he can answer some questions about toxic air contaminants and other things like that. All right, so just to go over it again because this meeting tonight is for a informational session as well as for a hearing. So the first thing I wanna just kind of talk to you guys and we'll go over this a few times. You'll hear me a couple of times say this same thing, but if you have a question that you want the panel to answer during the question and answer period, please type the word question and then ask your question in the question box. And the reason for this is pretty evident in a second. Because we're also doing a hearing tonight, we want to give you the opportunity to type in your comments. So sometimes when we do live hearings, we let people write their comments down on a comment card. Well, obviously, you don't have a comment card. So if you can write the word comment and then type your comment, um, if you want your comment read out loud, I'm happy to do that. Just 
write, um, if you don't want me to read it out loud, I guess, right, please don't read out loud. And then I won't do that. Um, and But the easiest way for you to get your comments on the record, especially if you have something that's quite lengthy or you have um, additional information that you want to attach, you're going to want to use this email address that I just popped up on the screen. And I'm also going to chat that to you here just in a second. All right, so you should have that in your chat box as well if you want to use that email address. You can do that at any time during the night and um, the comment period is going to stay open until um, the end of the night on the 3rd of April. So you'll have some extra time after the hearing's over if you want to review some of the materials. You can do that too. I sent you a link already in your chat box to the materials where they are online. So if you wanted to look at those at all, you can. Um, so there's a lot of good information out there and we definitely wanna make this as easy for you all as possible. Um, I know this isn't ideal. Usually we ask people to raise their hands and let them speak and we are gonna try to do that at the end. So if you really want to say your comment verbally, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you have a microphone that's working and we will get to those at the end of the evening. And so before I pass this on to Andy, and he's gonna take over from now on, but I just wanted to let you all know that we are going to do our do the informational session, we're gonna do the question and answer session, and then once we're finished with that, or at seven o'clock, whichever comes sooner, we're going to start the actual hearing portion. So I just, I know that's a little bit different. We didn't, if we end early, I don't want you guys just waiting around on the line for a half hour or whatever it is. So Andy, I'm gonna pass this over to you. And once you get it on your screen, you can share your screen with us and then you can take it from there. All right, I think I'm ready. So good evening, my name is Andy Drury. As Jennifer said, I am the lead permit engineer for the proposed changes to the surface operations at the Eagle Mine and for the change to the ore truck throughput limit at both the Eagle Mine and the Humboldt Mill. I am one of the many AQD staff involved in the review of Eagle Mine's applications. We're going to start with an overview of the air quality division and then talk about Eagle Mine's proposed changes. We all know that pollution comes from many different things, such as big farms, fuel burning vehicles, and industrial sources. The overall mission of the air quality division is to make sure the air we breathe is clean. We have the authority to do this by regulating industrial sources. The AQD is separated into different functions. For example, air quality staff monitor levels of air pollutants examine toxic air contaminants to make sure public health is protected, conduct inspections of facilities that AQD regulates, and as Jen said, Joe Scanlon is the inspector for the Eagle Mine and the Humboldt Mill. And then there's my function as part of the permit section to review applications and write permits for sources of air pollutants to ensure they comply with the air quality rules and regulations. The Air Quality Division has the authority to permit sources of air pollutants. However, I want to point out a few things that the air permit does not cover and that the AQD does not have the ability to regulate. If you have questions or concerns about issues such as zoning, noise, and traffic, we will want to talk directly to your local government. The permitting process is complex, but I will give a brief overview of the process an applicant and the AQD go through to get a proposed permit ready for comment. First, the applicant plans the project, and then they submit an application to the AQD for a permit. The application is reviewed by an engineer. Once the proposed permit is peer reviewed and approved by the AQD inspector, it is sent to the company for review. After that, the proposed permit is posted for public comment. Comments received during the public comment period are evaluated and can lead to changes to the proposed permit or the proposed final decision. Finally, a decision is made on the permit application. The application can be approved, approved with changes, or denied. The current air permit for the Eagle Mine was issued on June 28, 2013. The facility is currently operating as allowed by this permit. As you may know, the Humboldt Mill was originally built in the 1950s. The mill was refurbished in order to process ore from the Eagle Mine. The current air permit for the Humboldt Mill was issued on January 27, 2014. The mill is currently operating as allowed by this permit. 
The Humboldt Mill process is ore from the Eagle Mine, so the two facilities are related, but it's important to note that they are not the same source. So what is Eagle Mine proposing? Eagle Mine currently stores aggregate in the aggregate storage building. Eagle Mine wants to add an outdoor aggregate and sand storage area north of the development rock storage area. Eagle Mine wants this additional storage so they can bring aggregate and sand to the facility when travel conditions are good and avoid bringing material in when travel conditions are bad, especially in the winter. Aggregate and sand are used to make cement that is used as backfill in the mine. Eagle Mine wants to add a portable development rock screening plant in the development rock storage area. Eagle Mine would use this plant to separate development rock by size so that properly sized development rock could be used to make cement for backfill in the mine. Eagle Mine also wants to change the ore truck throughput limit from a 12 month rolling limit to a calendar year limit. During some parts of the year, especially in the winter when roads are bad, Eagle Mine does not truck as much ore to the Humboldt Mill. Eagle Mine makes up for the reduced trucking during other parts of the year. Eagle Mine wants the calendar year limit to make it easier to meet their annual production goals. This change would not increase emissions from the mine beyond the level reviewed for the current and previous permits. The annual emission estimates are already based on a calendar year, and the modeling is based on the hourly emission rates. This site plan shows the proposed changes of the Eagle Mine. The purple path is the paved roadway the aggregate and sand to delivery trucks would travel on. The light blue path is the unpaved roadway the delivery trucks would travel on. The light green box is the proposed aggregate and sand storage area. The green path is the paved roadway for moving material from the storage area to the backfill plant. And the dark area on the left side of the screen there is the temporary development rock storage area where the screening plant would be located. So what is Humboldt Mill proposing? The Humboldt Mill air permit has the same ore truck throughput limit as the Eagle Mine. Since all ore from the Eagle Mine is processed at the Humboldt Mill, Humboldt Mill proposes to change the ore truck limit to match the proposed limit at the Eagle Mine. Key aspects to the Eagle Mine application review include ensuring there is adequate dust control for the outdoor aggregate and sand storage area and the development rock screening plant, estimating emissions from these new emission sources, and dispersion modeling of all emissions from the Eagle Mine not just the new emission sources, to ensure the facility complies with state and federal health-based standards. The change to the truck throughput limit was reviewed to make sure the limit is enforceable. The US EPA has guidance on the enforceability of limits. The revised limit is still enforceable. And for both the Eagle Mine and the Humboldt Mill, the change to the truck throughput limit does not change the emissions. For the proposed outdoor aggregate and sand storage area at the Eagle Mine, the proposed permit requirements include limiting the visible emissions to 5% opacity. This would apply to the storage area and to truck traffic transporting aggregate and sand. Limiting the size of the storage area to five acres. The emissions are based on the size of the stump of the pile. Eagle Mine would have to include the outdoor aggregate and sand storage area in the fugitive dust plant. For the proposed screening plant at the Eagle Mine, the proposed permit requirements include limiting visible emissions to 5% opacity, limiting the amount of development rock that could be screened, the emissions from the plant are based on the throughput, catch up here, a water spray to control dust emissions, this is a standard control method for this type of operation, and Eagle Mine would have to include the screening plant in the future of dust plan. So this concludes my presentation. So give us a few moments and we'll begin the uh, taking questions for the question and answer session. Yep, thank you so much, Andy. We do have a couple questions that came in, but we have plenty of time. So if you guys have other questions on either one of these projects, please feel free to put them in the question box. Um, Andy, I'm gonna let you just keep control of the screen for a little while. And if I need to take it back from you, I will. So um, this first question is, I think actually what I would like to do is have Andy, if you talk a little bit about what was included in the proposed 
um, draft permits. And then I might have Joe um, weigh in a little bit on what currently happens. So here's the question. Can you explain whether Air Quality Division, given the department's authority to monitor, examine, and inspect, collect or inspect any air quality data for the mine's emissions? So um, what do what is the permit, the proposed permits, what would they require the company to monitor um, and record? And then Joe, if you can talk a little bit about that, Andy, and then Joe, if you can talk a little bit about what they currently have to do. And then Andy, I don't want to bug you, but stop moving your mouse around the, the screen on that one. All right, here we go. So uh, the key thing is they have to monitor the opacity, the dust emissions from the facility. Um, that's one of the key parameters. They have to keep records of their dust control measures. Um, there was a stack test that they did. They had to have records of that. Um, if another test would be required, they'd have to keep those records for us as well. Um, and for a test, they submit the plan to us and we evaluate it. And then when they do the test, we typically have staff there who are observing the test. And then we check out the uh, results of the test too to make sure the data is good. Um, so that's kind of the key thing. Uh, they also have to track the number of trucks that leave the facility. Uh, because there is that truck throughput limit and they have to track the, track that to make sure they're complying. And so that's largely what the requirements of the permit are. So Joe, can you talk a little bit about what you currently might, what kind of record keeping you might gather during an inspection or uh, things like that? He had a little bit of problems with his uh, mic earlier, so... There you go, Joe, try it again and see if we can hear you. Nope, we still can't hear you. So we're gonna skip that part. Um, I can see who did ask the question. So I will definitely make sure that we get back to you on that or if you want to clarify a little bit more on what precise information you're looking for, that would be great. Um, the second question goes a little bit to what you had talked about earlier, Andy, and it is in terms of the number of ore trucks running per hour between the mine and the mill or the throughput, quote unquote, is there any method of verifying compliance with the current limit or does the mine self enforce? The responsibility to track compliance with that is on the mine. They have to keep records of the number of trucks that leave the mine site. Uh, so it's primarily their responsibility. That information can somewhat be independently gathered by uh, their reports on how much ore they've produced. Um, that's probably not available day to day, uh, but they do have some some requirements, I think, that they do, and so they probably report that to their shareholders and things like that. But primarily, it's the responsibility of the company to track the number of trucks, and then Joe would evaluate the uh, of that record and make sure it complied with the permit requirements. Yep, and we'll speak a little bit for him and if he can chime in, I'm sure he's trying to. I can see that he's unmuted, but we just can't hear him talking right now. So that's definitely something as an inspector, you're going to check, you're going to take those permits with you and either the existing ones or the new ones, however they end up getting approved or not approved, if there's new ones that come along, the inspector is going to take those permits and they're going to go condition by condition through the permits and ensure that the companies are doing what it says in the permits, meeting all those record keeping and monitoring requirements. Um, so that was the last question that we have. So if you all have other questions, we'll give you a minute to type a couple more in and um, we'll see if Joe can get himself unmuted here. All right. Um, and then I don't know, Ed, if maybe you want to speak to some of that since Joe can't. I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot a little bit, but if you feel like we missed something, Ed Lancaster is also on the line with us today, and he is the supervisor of our district office up there. So, Ed, if you wanted to add anything on to what Andy and I have already said. Yeah, I, I just uh, would like to say that um, when we do our inspections, we do look at their uh, truck log records to make sure excuse me, that um, how many trucks they actually have out on the uh, on the road on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, those trucks are all weighed prior to leaving the uh, mine, so we can keep track of their weight limits. Um, I know I have personally called uh, the company on some of the uh, truck drivers when I think they're not operating uh, 
properly and, and they can pinpoint which operator I, I'm referring to by because they track them with uh, GPS units. So um, yeah, so I, I think those are some of the things we take a look at um, while we're there. Uh, and as when we're there, we you know do our visual inspections and make sure that they're applying water to the paved roadways to keep the dust down. Those are some of the things we're looking at. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate you chiming in on that. Um, I got another question, and I'm not exactly sure what it means. So I'm going to ask it because maybe Ed, you do. Um, or maybe Andy does. Um, so the question is, does the air permit require emission specific financial assurances? Um, here we go, financial assurances related to remediation of environment in, in the post mining phase. So once they're done with the mine, is there anything in the permit that requires them to have um, the financial means to take care of anything that would happen afterwards? So I don't know, Ed, if you want to talk about that a little bit, or if Andy, if you want to chime in, um, that's something that usually falls to a, a different division in Eagle, but I, you guys might have some insight on that. Uh, you're, you're right, Jen. The financial assurance is all handled through the uh, Part 632 mining permit. Uh, the AIR program does not have any type of a financial assurance where the company is required to set aside money to help pay for uh, remediation and things like that. That's not part of the air program. Okay, thanks, Andy. I was wondering if that was what it was. And I know it's complicated when we have all these permits coming for um, from different divisions and different parts of Eagle for one facility um, and kind of parsing out who's responsible for what portion of that. So that was the last of our questions. And I would I want to give you guys a minute to ask any other questions that you might have. And um, like I said previously, if you want to type in a comment, you can also do that. Um, I think I had shared that email address with you all earlier, just to make sure that um, you have that um, available to you if you want to send anything in. And like I said earlier, and you'll hear this again later, that the public comment period for the, these two proposed projects will go until midnight on April 3rd. We wanted to just make sure everyone had a, a long enough opportunity to get their comments in if they um, weren't able to kind of prepare for this because it's so different than what's been going on previously. So we, and we really do appreciate all of your cooperation with the changes from having the in-person meeting to this. I hope everyone is staying home and staying safe like we've been told to do. Um, as I waste a little bit of time waiting to see if you guys have any questions, I do have and three boys right now and I told to stay away while we're having the meeting. So I'm sure you guys are all in the same boat. So Jen, if you take control back from me, I can check that PTI comment uh, mailbox and see if anyone sent a question there too. Okay, sure. And then we did have another question, and I'll take that back from you in a second, but we did have another question. So um, the question is, how are air pollution deposition impacts to the local environment, such as the adjacent wetlands and the salmon trout river headwaters assessed in this permit in terms of co-occurring stressors of the actual mining? So I think Tom might be able to talk a little bit about the air modeling that was done. So Tom, I know he was having some issues with his mic earlier, but I think we got him figured out. So Tom, do you want to chime in on that? And let me know if you need me to reread the question for you. Uh, yes, I can uh, answer that. Um, in this particular project, uh, we didn't do the deposition modeling because it was done uh, in the prior prior project. and it wasn't deemed necessary to run that type of modeling again for, for this uh, project because the changes were quite minor uh, compared to the project that was uh, evaluated back in, I believe it was 2013. All right, thanks, Tom, appreciate it. So Andy, I took the control back from you. So I look, go ahead and check that mailbox if you want. 
Um, we got one more question in here while we're doing that. So it says the basis for the decision says that the Eagle Mines modeling demonstrated that existing air quality limits will still be met. How has that been verified then if we haven't done an actual model? And um, Andy, you might need to speak to that a little bit, but I don't know if Tom, you could speak a little bit to that as well. Well, we did, we re-ran the uh, modeling for the entire facility, um, just like we did for the original permit. Um, and not at what the uh, actual emission levels are, but what at the maximum allowed emission levels are. Uh, so we did run the modeling just like last time around to show that the uh, maximum emissions the permit would let the offsite meet the health-based uh, thresholds, both the state and federal. All right, thank you. Okay, so one thing that we are going to want to do before we move on to the actual hearing part, I just got a note from my boss that said, Jennifer, you need to run the poll because this is one of the metrics we need to collect is how many people are listening at your location. So hopefully if you guys end up seeing that, you can let me know um, if you have more than one person, that would be great just to know how many people are actually listening in. Since this is one of the first public meeting hearings that air quality has done. I think we've done other ones, but at least during this crisis, um, and we're going to be doing more as time goes forward. So we wanna make sure we're getting you guys what you need. So I appreciate that you answered that question for me. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Um, so you guys don't need to look at that anymore. Um, all right, well, I think we're gonna shift over to the actual hearing portion. So like we said before, if you guys are going to want to actually speak a comment, we'll, we're going to try to do that. So once we read the opening statement and open officially open it up, um, you'll be able to raise your hand on the attendee or in, on your GoToWebinar um, I lost my words for a second, <laughs> go to webinar, and then we'll try to unmute your mic so that we can have you actually read your comment out loud or say your comment out loud for the record. So um, one of the questions, we got one more question here, and I'm not sure who would be able to answer this one, maybe you, Andy, but so um, the question is, did the new modeling, I guess it was a rerun of the modeling or relook at the modeling, acknowledge the changes in the geochemistry of the ore? So I don't know. Um, if you can talk a little bit about that for me, Andy. For the development rock portion of the emissions, yes, all of the emission rates for the various different um, air toxics, all the different metals, were based on the highest that had been found in either the new development rock or the existing development rock from the original permit. I don't know if they did that with the ore or not. Um, we can check into that. Uh, all the numbers are quite low. So even if the concentrations are considerably higher than what we looked at, everything still meets all the requirements. But that's one thing we can check to make sure how that was done. Thank you. And just because we do have this extra time after the end of this hearing, if you do feel like you have other questions, you can reach out either through that email address that we gave you earlier or to Andy directly. I'm sure he'd be happy to provide his contact information. I mean, we're all working at home now, but he's got great access to email. So he would be happy to answer any questions that you might have on this as well as you get ready to enter a comment and or decide whether or not you want to enter a comment. So. Um, feel free again to put your comments in um, if you want to type them in, but we're going to go ahead and read the opening statement now. So I'm going to read it. I know it's kind of boring, but I'm going to be serving as the hearings officer tonight. And then we have Mary Ann Dolahanty, who's Air Quality Division Director, and she is also on the line listening into everyone's comments this evening to make sure that um, we have our decision maker on board. So bear with me while I read this to you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jennifer Dixon and I am with the Environmental Support Division of the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. I will be serving as the hearing officer for this public hearing on a permit to install application for the Eagle Mine located in Michigami Township, Michigan and a permit to install application for the Humboldt Mill located in Champion, Michigan. 
We have Marianne Dolahanty, Director of the Air Quality Division, who is the decision maker for these permit applications listening in on this hearing tonight. The Air Quality Division is responsible for regulating sources of air pollutants to minimize adverse impacts on public health and the environment. The law governing those responsibilities is Part 55 of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act. We are here tonight because the Eagle Mine is proposing to add an outdoor aggregate and sand storage area, operate a portable development rock screening plant, and to change the time frame of the ore truck throughput limit and because the Humboldt Mill is proposing to change the time frame of the ore truck throughput limit. In order for these changes to be made, the department must approve an air permit to install. Before the department can issue a permit to install, the proposals must meet certain criteria set by Part 55 and associated administrative rules. In general, those criteria require the process and process equipment to be capable of meeting state and federal emission standards, including health-based standards. Permit conditions enforceable as a practical matter must be approved, including emission limits and operational restrictions. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to give anyone interested in the proposed changes an opportunity to provide information the department may use in deciding whether to approve the permits to install or if there are additional issues to consider. Please note the proposed permits to install are still draft permits. This does not mean the department has already made a decision. Instead, it reflects an initial technical review of the proposals. We hope having the details of the draft permits available will help you in providing comments. Everything in the draft permits remains open for comment and further consideration by the department, including whether the permits will be granted at all. Please recognize the department can only use the information you provide if it relates to the criteria the department must use in making a decision. For example, concerns related to local zoning, truck traffic, and noise are not within the department's authority. Some of you may want to simply express your support or opposition to the proposed changes. We'll be happy to make note of your position, but please understand the department is, by law, not allowed to base our decision on whether there is a widespread support or opposition to the proposed changes. This hearing is being recorded and your comments will be part of the information the department will consider in making its decision on the proposed changes. The public comment period for the draft permits began, April, I'm sorry, February 14th, 2020, and will end at midnight on April 3rd, 2020. Additional information may be submitted tonight or at any time until the end of the comment period via email. After the close of the comment period, the decision maker will review all written and verbal comments received. All significant air quality related comments will be considered at which point final decisions will be made by the decision maker. The decision maker may deny a permit, approve as drafted, or approve with amendments. If approved, the decision must specify which provisions of the draft permit, if any, have been changed in the final permit and the reasons for the change. In all three scenarios, all interested parties, including everyone who was on the original mailing list, anyone who provided comments during the public comment period, and anyone who attended this public hearing will be directly notified of the decisions. Included in the mailing will be a letter from the decision maker regarding the decisions and if applicable, the approved permit or permits. As stated previously, you may submit a written comment at any time to the email address provided. You may also type the word comment into your question box and submit your comment. I will read aloud all comments you submit via the question box unless you state do not read. If you would like to make a verbal comment, you may raise your hand and I will unmute your line so you can speak. We will limit your comment time to three minutes. If you are speaking, I will let you know when you have 30 seconds left. I will do my best to address comments in the order your hands were raised, but please bear with us as the technology has challenges with doing that. Please recognize department staff are here tonight to provide a fair opportunity for you to express your views on the proposed outdoor aggregate and sand storage area development rock screening plant and change to the time frame of the ore truck limits and to listen to those comments. Thank you for your attention. I will now begin calling the names of those who have indicated they would like to make a statement. Or I will try. All right.
And I do not see that anyone has their hands raised at this point to make a verbal comment. We'll give you a few minutes to either decide to raise your hand if you'd like to make a verbal comment or to enter a comment into the question box. Okay, so we have someone raising their hand. Thank you. I'm going to unmute your line and hopefully we'll be able to hear you, Kathleen. So please state your name for the record. You should be able to speak. Hello. We can hear you. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Kathleen Heidemann and I'm um, testifying on behalf of the Upper Peninsula Environmental Coalition. Uh, I, I would like to say I, I find this a little disconcerting, um, the go-to webinar uh, tool that you're using. Um, I realize it's it's a, a fail, a, a poor facsimile of an actual hearing, but um, the fact that there's no way to see whether there's anyone else in the the hearing um, is really sort of disorienting. I mean, other than the, the staff who are speaking. So um, I, would, I would say that our primary concerns have to do with the uh, missions um, that are expected from the, uh, the portable screen crusher, crusher and screening area. Um, that unit, um, since that's new, um, represents uh, a new and, and sort of un, um, a difficult to assess emission. Uh, we request um, a, a greater uh, testing because of that. The rock that's being, uh, that will be crushed in that area um, is going to be coming from development rock from both Eagle and Eagle East. Um, it's a mix of the two within the, the um, temporary rock development storage area. It's a huge quantity of rock that's out there right now. There's there's no cover to it, um, and even though you know some uh, emissions could be limited with with misting uh, in that area, I don't think it's in the mines' um, uh, interest to mist uh, or spray with water up there because that all has to be uh, additionally treated after collecting. So um, I think it's a very um, difficult thing. Uh, to assess the real impacts of that crushing screening unit, um, especially because the pile is up high. Um, we're um, being asked to um, consider what the downwind impacts of that might be. Um, I'm hoping that maybe um, the impacts uh, could be mitigated if there were um, walls uh, constructed, uh, uh, permanent temporary walls put around that crushing area. Um, it's not really clear exactly where it would be positioned in the temporary rock storage area pile, um, which is a, a big area and it's up in the air to begin with. So um, I would ask that there be walls constructed um, on at least three sides uh, in the crushing area um, and that it not be uh, up high in the stack. Um, of, of, of in the pile so that uh, the wind doesn't hit it. Um, and I guess um, the other part that's really concerning is the emissions uh, modeling. Um, all this is based, uh, the fact that, you know, there, there are new emissions uh, coming from new ore from Eagle East um, and the development rock for Eagle East. All of, all of the modeling that you're testing is um, and rerunning for this permit is based on the modeling that was done for 2014. Um, the only confirmation of that was in 2014 in September when the SAC test was done up at Eagle. And 
Um, we have uh, real concerns that that stack test was done prematurely. Uh, it was done before the mine had hit um, their uh, full production. Um, and so all of the, the levels uh, of, of contaminants of concern that they would have been uh, finding in their emissions were um, lower uh, probably than um, the actual emissions that are taking place out there. Um, so it's not clear uh, why they're not being required to do another stack test, um, especially since a new ore body has been added to the project um, tied in with EGLE. Um, without a new stack test, we don't understand how cumulative impacts can truly be assessed. Um, I believe that in order to have a conservative approach to this permit, you need to have integrated modeling that considers not just modeling, um, but actual data, um, actual new data, real data um, that uh, in, is done to time with the, um, the production from Eagle East. And um, uh, Eagle East uh, is uh, further away, uh, the blasting uh, and the venting of that through their existing staff is um, going to be uh, increasing the emissions, at least in the short term, while they're, they're both uh, commingled. And so we really urge the department to require a stack test um, before this permit is uh, issued. Um, I, don't, I don't understand how uh, the stack test can be done unless, I mean, I don't understand how the permit can be issued unless a stack test is done to confirm the modeling. Um, thanks very much. Uh, we urge, uh, in the absence of a stack test, um, that this permit not be uh, uh, approved. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comment. We have one more hand raised. Mr. Schmidt, I'm going to try to unmute you so that you can make your comment. I have just unmuted you. If you could, I think we can hear you. All right. Um... This is Horace Schmidt. I'm with the Upper Peninsula Environmental Coalition, and I uh, support the comments that uh, Kathleen uh, Heidemann has made, and uh, hope that we can also get the uh, testing done. Uh, my experience with with the uh, Department's Air Quality Division has been that it's difficult to get the department to do what is actually said in the regulations when it comes to uh, testing. Of, of emissions. The the other uh, matter I have is uh, the uh, a lot of the work that is uh, done by your department is is um, modeling. Uh, uh, am I correct, Mr. Schmidt? We can't um, respond to your questions during the comment period. Uh, I see. Oh, we're not in the information period. Right. Well, my, my my question, not my question, my comment is, is that uh, are you independently verifying the uh, measure of uh, the emissions uh, or are you totally relying upon uh, Eagle of Mine to, to give you the information and, and how are you able to keep, get any data that is independent of, of their uh, the material that they send you so we know whether or not they actually are following the emissions law. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Schmidt, for your comment. I don't see any other hands raised at the moment. I'll give you a couple more minutes in case anyone would else would like to make an additional comment.
Okay, I don't see any other hands raised. So we're going to go ahead and close the hearing for now. So thank you for your comments and cooperation tonight. We appreciate your interest in the proposed permits to install for the Eagle Mine and the Humboldt Mill and the time you took to be here tonight. As indicated at the beginning of the hearing, the public comment period will close at midnight on April 3rd, 2020. All interested parties, anyone who provided comments during the public comment period, and anyone who attended this public hearing will be directly notified of the final decisions on these proposed permits. So thank you again. That closes the hearing portion of tonight's meeting. We really appreciate everyone taking the time to participate tonight. I know it's a little clunky, so thank you again for your patience. If you have questions or further comments, please feel free to submit them to the email address on your screen. Um, I'm sure Andy can respond to other questions that you have outside of the comment um, period as well. So thank you everyone for your time and attention tonight. I hope everyone stays in and stays safe.